a Chinese grandmother in her 80s, who has a disability and uses crutches, applied to build a new house in Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada with a proposed higher ground floor elevation than the front yard elevation so that she wouldn't have to go down steps coming home from the front street. However, the application was opposed by some neighbors, at an appeal to the Board of Variants, an independent committee appointed by the city of Burnaby. Despite attaching photos proving the elderly grandmother's disability and a report from the city's planning department stating that the height increase had no impact on the surrounding neighborhood houses and the environment, the Board of Variants rejected the application on the ground that the proposal is a design preference. The government planner made serious errors in their calculations and suggested design changes that would have made it harder for the elderly woman to navigate around the property. What happened? Are there really such pitfalls when buying a house on a slope? In this video, I will tell you the story and share the details of how some government officials can be indifferent to the needs of citizens. I will also provide some insight into the building application process and the city's internal review procedures. Lastly, I will give some tips on how to avoid such situations when purchasing a property. The story began in January 2019 when a homeowner decided to build a new house on a south-facing slope. The lot was situated in a way that the front of the house was higher than the back. The slope was steep, and the grandmother, who is in her 80s and has been a teacher all her life, needed to use crutches to go out due to a disability. Due to the city's height restrictions, the calculation is based on adding 9 meters to the height of the lower side, the backyard, to get the highest point of the roof. This results in the main floor of the house being lower than the street level. The elderly grandmother has difficulty going up and down the steps when going for a walk, and the rainy and snowy climate in Vancouver makes it easy to slip and fall on uneven ground. As a daughter, the homeowner wanted to show filial piety and asked our company City Design if it would be possible to raise the level of the main floor without changing the height of 10 feet and 8.5 feet for the upstairs. With the height taken up by the floor slabs and sloping roof, the peak of the sloping roof exceeds the height limit by 70 centimeters. We advised the homeowner to seek a variation and appeal to the Burnaby Board of Variants in order to request an increase in the height of their house by approximately 70 centimeters. Typically, the Board of Variants will grant such requests if evidence of undue hardship is presented. The homeowner followed our recommendation and submitted their appeal to the Board. According to the city's official website, Burnaby.ca, the Board of Variants is an independent body that considers variances to the Burnaby Zoning Bylaw regarding the sitting, size and dimensions of buildings. Consisting of five council-appointed members, the Board has the authority to grant variances where compliance with the bylaw may cause a person undue hardship. Undue hardship is a legal term used to describe a situation where complying with a particular law or regulation would cause an excessive burden or difficulty for a person or organization. In zoning laws, a property owner may apply for an exemption from certain zoning regulations if complying with those regulations would cause undue hardship, such as significant financial burden or preventing reasonable use of the property. City of Burnaby Advertisement on Facebook says. Local governments generally attempt to appoint individuals who have some knowledge or experience related to land development, since that's the activity that is regulated by the bylaws for which the variance applications are made. Retired building contractors, land surveyors, realtors, architects, and civil engineers are encouraged to apply. In our appeal letter to the city, we attached some photos that prove the elderly grandmother's disability. After receiving the application, the planning department issued a report in advance to the board members. The city also sent letters to the surrounding neighbors. One neighbor across the street complained that the new house obstructed the view and affected the value of their house, even though their side of street was much higher. On the contrary, city's planning department report says that it had no impact on any neighbor. Another neighbor's letter stating that the new house destroyed the neighborhood style, making the old house appear shabby. This is the Google Street view of the finished house, left, and the neighbor's house. We can see that the volume and height of the newly constructed house are similar to those of the existing houses on the street, and there is no sense of abruptness. The neighboring house doesn't look shabby because of the new house. On the left side of the new house is another house being built, also designed by our company City Design. Even though the city planner's report does not support these unfounded assumptions, the opposition from the neighbors could still have a negative impact on their application. Although the BOV members are professionals in related fields, they appear to lack confidence in their judgment and heavily rely on reports issued by the city's planning department. Typically, they approve proposals when the reports recommend approval, but when the reports advise against approval, they are less likely to approve. 
the city planner's report acknowledged that the height of the front facade was far lower than the city's height limit. The excessive height was due to the terrain. The report acknowledged that the height increase had no impact on the surrounding neighborhood houses and the neighborhood. This is our proposed elevation plan, which demonstrates that only two levels and the roof will be visible from the front street. The basement level is fully concealed beneath the street elevation, ensuring that our proposal does not pose any threat to the streetscape and neighborhood consistency. It seems that the planning department should not object our proposal at this point, but the following opinions caused a turnaround in the argument, leading to opposition. Firstly, the planner has indicated that our proposal is partly related to the sloping site and partly due to design preference. It appears that our design preference may be a significant factor that could potentially hinder the success of our appeal. The planner suggested lowering the main floor towards the ground lower than the front yard, which is the opposite of our application's original intention. The planner either misunderstood our application or completely disregarded the elderly woman's desire to have a level front entrance that aligns with the street level. While the planner proposed a downward sloping ramp from the front yard to the house's main entrance, this solution may not be suitable in winter when black ice is often difficult to see, and uneven ground could increase the risk of falls, particularly for elderly individuals. The planner attempted to calculate the required number of steps for our backyard design and concluded that it would not work. However, we have provided video evidence that shows that our backyard design is functional. Furthermore, this calculation is not directly relevant to our proposal, which only concerns the front yard. We have addressed the grandmother's accessibility needs by suggesting dropping her off at the front street, and she can still access the backyard garden with just a few steps down from the main floor without having to go down to the sunken garage in the backyard. The sloped backyard is a result of the terrain, not our design preference. It is noteworthy that the report did not address the elderly woman's disability at all. We revised our design and proposal and presented it at a second meeting which happened a month later with the BOV. We proposed a main floor ceiling height of 9.5 feet instead of 10 feet. We also lowered the main floor elevation slightly just to make sure the main floor is only slightly higher than the front yard entrance to prevent water flooding into the house. As a result, the intrusion beyond the height limit was reduced by another foot. However, the planner seemed to have difficulty understanding our calculation which is quite straightforward and can be done with basic high school geometry knowledge. Unfortunately, despite our efforts, the proposal was still defeated. Our proposed ceiling heights are almost identical to those proposed by the planner, except for the planner's proposal for the cellar ceiling height to be 8 feet. However, the basement ceiling height does not impact the total building height, as the zoning bylaw calculates building height from the lower side of the finished ground outside of the building, rather than the basement ground height within the house. In other words, the planner's conclusion to reject our appeal is based on a misconception that the basement ceiling height would affect the total building height. The request of an 80-year-old Chinese grandmother to build her entrance level higher than the front yard, due to her disability, has been denied by both the city and the society. Additionally, some of her neighbors are opposing the construction of a new home next to their older ones, purely because the new home will make the old homes look shabby. These events raise important questions about our society's values and priorities. It is possible that this urban planner has quantified all aspects of urban planning but has overlooked the most crucial factor, human nature. Urban planning involves designing and creating spaces that meet the needs of the people who live and work in those areas. Urban planning should stress the needs of vulnerable or marginalized groups. Urban planning should aim to create inclusive and accessible spaces that meet the needs of all members of the community, including those who may face barriers to accessing public spaces or services. This may involve designing streets and housing that are accessible to people with disabilities. In addition, in BOV's previous meeting minutes, that can be found online, there are many precedents approved to allow the increase of building height, and there is no problem with setting precedents here. During the meeting, a member of the BOV suggested that the main floor ceiling height could be reduced from 10 feet to 8 feet. However, it would not be reasonable to build an expensive house with such a low ceiling on the main floor. Many old houses in Vancouver's, which were constructed a century ago, have ceilings that are higher than 10 feet. In various cities, many older homes appear taller than newer ones. It is worth noting that the members of the BOV are professionals, such as engineers, realtors, and land developers, and the suggestion to lower the ceiling height was not due to a lack of knowledge or understanding. While Freud's theory about the subconscious may be debated, the suggestion made by the committee member to lower the ceiling height may indeed reflect underlying biases or beliefs. 
it is possible that their suggestion was influenced by subconscious attitudes towards certain groups. In both Western and Eastern culture, there is an emphasis on treating others with kindness and respect, which ultimately benefits both individuals and society as a whole. During the meeting, a female committee member who appeared to be around 60 years old made a comment that her own mother, who is over 80 years old, cannot live forever, so there is no need to consider the needs of the elderly in the design. This statement is concerning as it suggests a lack of empathy and disregard for the well-being of the elderly. It raises questions about whether she would be able to show empathy for an unfamiliar, elderly person from a different ethnicity. Aging is a universal experience, and everyone will eventually grow old, including ourselves and our loved ones. Making insensitive remarks about the elderly can be hurtful and disrespectful, particularly in a public setting in front of city officials, homeowners, developers, and other members of the committee. During the whole process, the planning department refused to communicate with us. Here is the response email from the planning department, stating that they are unable to answer questions related to the second appeal. Here is my reply. Thank you for your prompt response. I apologize for any confusion caused by my previous email. I didn't intend to negotiate, but rather to express our desire to reduce the height of the building by one foot. Our client, who has a handicapped mother, is hoping for a flat front yard, and we understand the importance of accommodating their needs. However, we were disheartened to hear the insensitive comments made by a committee member at the last meeting, such as, everyone wants her mom to live a hundred years but unfortunately she's going to die, and the email from a neighbor who seems to think they have the power to dictate who can and cannot build on the street, because they have lived there for 28 years. Thank you for your understanding. I never received any further communication from the planner after that. The BOV has been granted the power by the City Council to override the limitations of zoning bylaws and veto the planning department's decisions. Therefore, they should exercise their judgment carefully instead of blindly following the recommendations of the planning department. While these decisions may seem arbitrary to the city, they have significant consequences for homeowners. The lack of diversity of opinions in the BOV is rooted in their lack of confidence in independent thinking. In contrast to the previous term, where a big-bearded older Indian man was willing to vote in favor, the current committee appears one-sided in opposition. However, requests to increase building height can be approved with a little bit of sympathy from the committee members. When admitting students, Harvard Medical School not only considers academic performance but also compassion and volunteer work. Similarly, when appointing government officials who wield power over people's lives, it is crucial to find those who prioritize compassion over callousness or envy. The central issue in this matter is not technical but one of humanity. In any job, it is essential to act with integrity and be true to oneself and others. Even if no one else knows, one's conscience will quietly keep a record. Ultimately, cold-hearted power can have deadly consequences. The photo shows a drone view of a house with a flat middle section on the roof, which cannot be seen from the street. While flat roofs have a shorter lifespan than sloping roofs, it is puzzling why the city cannot allow for a small leniency of a few centimeters in height. Many newly built houses in Burnaby face this issue. When purchasing a property, it is advisable to consider choosing a lot that is relatively flat or has a higher elevation than the street to prevent encountering similar issues in the future. The meeting where this issue was discussed took place in early 2019. The BOV committee has since had new members and the house has been built during the pandemic, but the grandma is still unable to come to Canada. In a few years, it is likely that she will be unable to walk and unable to enjoy her new home and the Canadian scenery. It is unfortunate that locals sometimes exclude or envy new home builds, as highlighted in a news story from a couple of years ago reported by Global News. Two Chinese-Canadian real estate agents were targeted with racist attacks while promoting a $12.8 million lakeside mansion in Penticton, British Columbia, despite the fact that the seller and designer were both white. The comments directed towards the Chinese-Canadian real estate agents promoting a $12.8 million lakeside mansion in Penticton, British Columbia were filled with racism and exclusion, with phrases like, take your dirty money back to China, we don't want you laundering your money here, and, you're not welcome here or in this country. The agents even received a threatening email, filled with extreme language and sentiments like, you should be shot, and, Kevin Chen, you're not welcome in this province or country. Leave. In cases where government decisions lack oversight mechanisms, social media can serve as a limited but important tool for monitoring and influencing public opinion. If you've made it this far, please consider giving this post a thumbs up, 
and leave a comment below if you have any thoughts on this matter. Empathy can go a long way in creating a more inclusive and just world. Well, that is it for today's video. Thank you all. See you in the next one.